Good morning, friends. Um, sorry I'm coming to you a little late. I've been struggling to make this video. Um, getting used to the sun this time of year is crazy. And um, I don't have a real studio. I'm out here on my porch. And the sun has been chasing me all over the porch. And every time I get it set, um, then I go over time. <laughs> I'm just so excited to share with you today. So I'm going to start with a prayer that's been kind of keeping me calm here in this craziness. Um, the Send Me on a Cross is up. It's over there. It's been everywhere today because I keep rotating around. But it's there. Hopefully you have a cross somewhere in your heart. If not, oh, in your house. I meant in your house. But in your heart works too. Okay. In your Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. All highest, glorious God, cast your light into the darkness of our hearts. Give us right faith, firm hope, perfect charity, and profound humility with wisdom and perception, O Lord, so that we may do what is truly thy holy will. Amen. Okay, friend, that was the prayer, St. Francis's prayer before the crucifix. So it is exceptionally perfect for today. Hopefully we're going to wrap up a little bit. Uh, you can't really cover everything on on the different families of the church and Franciscan discernment. Um, I just think you can't, I can't fit it into a half an hour or however long this is taking. Ooh, look at that. That's kind of funny. Pay no attention to my clock. That doesn't work. Okay. Anyway, so yesterday we were talking about how do you learn about the different families in the church? And one of the things I said to do was to go look at their founders. And so hopefully those biographies are pretty easy to find out there, especially on St. Francis. Um, note that some versions, note I, I listed very specific ones in the end because some versions got a little bit crazy romantic in the 70s, 60s, 70s. They got a little wonky. So some of them are not um, perhaps helpful <laughs> <laughs> in your search. St. Francis got uh, adopted by some movements that were not super duper Franciscan. I probably shouldn't be saying that, but it is what it is. Um, there are some that are weird. You're going to know they're weird the second you're watching them. So don't think that's all Franciscan. Get out there and look. And I did give you the ones that are more accepted by the, um, excuse me, by, by the actual orders that they would prefer you look at. So I gave you those. Try and go back and look at that list. Again, it's the one by Chesterton. Of course, St. Francis early documents because they're they're the actual doc documents from the Franciscan order, right? Um, and the other one that's good is anything by Murray Bodo. I'm just going to put that out there. Anything by Murray Bodo. And he is. He is very lyrical, um, very romantic, and yet he's got it. He's, the truth is there. He didn't change it. He has the true beauty of St. Francis coming forth, not not some romantic version of him. Okay, the other thing I asked so that you could do was look at a rule. This is the rule of the Secular Franciscan Order. I'm not sure if you can get the true color in this wonky light, but it's a little red book. Um, it's nice because you can pop it in anywhere. Uh, it has some stuff in the beginning, um, letters from different people, including like the four ministers general of the Franciscan family. And so the four, the four big guys are Orders of Friar Minor, Orders of Friar Minor, Conventional, that's like the Shrine of St. Anthony in Ellicott City, those friars. The Orders of Friar Minor Capuchins, not the monkeys. And then um, TOR, those are the Third Order Regulars. Um, and the most famous of those, of course, would be Franciscan University of Steubenville, the friars that are out there. So then uh, a letter from our Minister General, and then a letter from St. Francis. Yeah, he, because remember, he actually founded our secular order. So the it's the exhortation of St. Francis to the brothers and sisters in penance. It is beautiful. I'm not going to read it to you here. I'm not. I'm not going to read it to you here because I want you to get out and, and get it and read it yourself because I can read you a snippet and then you're, you're just going to be so hungry for more. Just trust me. It is beautiful. Um, very scriptural. Of course, St. Francis just talked in the language of the Bible, like just, it just came out. <laughs> um, if you've never read his actual writings, you start reading the early documents and stuff, you're going to get what I'm saying. St. Francis lived the gospel life and you're going to hear that expression again and again. And we're going to touch on that in just a minute. Um, so like even this one, uh, rule one, pick a rule number, pick a rule number. Um, number eight, as Jesus was the true worshiper of the Father, so let prayer and contemplation be the soul of all they are and do. Let them participate in the sacramental life of the church, 
above all the Eucharist. Let them join in liturgical prayer in one of the forms proposed by the Church, reliving the mysteries of the life of Christ. Wow. Wow. Any of these little sections, um, there's chapters and there's sections, any of these sections, um, just gorgeous. So this was eight, section eight of, yeah, of chapter one. Nope, nope, chapter two. I wondered. Chapter two. So chapter one is the secular Franciscan order in general. Chapter two is the way of life. Such a tiny book to flip through. Chapter three is life and fraternity. And of course, the, there's going to be more detailed rules elsewhere, right? There are. We have more like how to live in fraternity life, like how to keep your books, blah, blah, blah. You know, we've, we've got, we've got the, like the Robert's rules of order kind of, we've got the rules, right? This is the rule of life. And then those are like the detailed, nuanced, namby-pamby, whatever rules. Not namby-pamby, that's the wrong one. Nitty gritty? Nitty gritty. Those are the nitty gritty rules. That's not what I'm talking about you reading. You don't have to read how to keep your books and, and like, Oh my gosh, just, just the minutia, right? You don't have to read that. Every group has those minutia rules. You don't have to read that to find out if you're Franciscan. <laughs> read the little red one. That's the guy you want to be reading. And then you're like, but I could unpack the, that one little thing for a year. And... Okay, so that this is the rule of 1978. Before that, our previous rule had made us into a devotional society. So we completely changed. Um, and yet didn't. Okay, so you, you're, I'm going to put the link to a video that explains that in the end. But if you're looking at a rule, you want to look at the current rule problem. Um, so here's our, our current rule of 1978. It's this little red book. And if you want to understand it more, soon afterwards they came out with this. Um, I believe it's out of print, but you can find it. It is the rule of the secular Franciscan order with a catechism and instructions. And so it's literally written, one column is the rule and the official commentary. Okay, and then we're going to have the catechism on it. So, remember we talked about the bottom of our catechism? Question, answer, question, answer, question, answer. So, just like in the Bible, right? God gave us something simple. We were supposed to memorize it. Didn't quite memorize it. Um, and then, after memorizing it, you're expected to understand it. So, you have those two phases in here. And then, we're going to jump into instructions so as you're learning it more the instructions are going to um, help you understand it so this actually starts out with who is Francis of Assisi and it technically that is a question but it gives you a much longer answer right so when you're in that in-between space and you want to know the details there are the details to help you understand it more more than just what you've been repeating and then there are questions for shared reflection so when you get to that stage Right? Your high school stage, if you're doing classical learning, right? Your, your last stage, you're going to be ready to argue. Um, and Jesus came for, for that stage, right? He was arguing with the Pharisees to try and help them learn it. So here it is. If you're in your little argumentative stage of your formation, here are the questions for contemplation at the end. If you don't have a fraternity near you, you can find a group, um, maybe a group of friends to look through it with you. Maybe you can find an online group. Maybe you can find a secular who's willing to discuss them with you over over the phone or something right um so you would start looking at those questions for reflection we don't use this in our formation anymore i don't know if anybody does maybe there is somebody who does we're not using this right now so go ahead and take your time and you can work your own way through this and be really sure that you want to join the secular franciscan order like i said if you don't have one super near you again you can find that either at our national site or you can go to the international site. They will link you up and help you find a group if, if there's one in your area. If not, you can absolutely do this book on your own, but either way, you're going to get a real feel for it. Um, and that was actually written by friars from Orders of Friar Minor. There was also a Capuchins and Secular Franciscans involved in the writing of that. So there, that has many authors. What we're currently using, at least in my fraternity, is the series of books by Lester Bach. This is by Lester Bach, but our formation books are spiral bound. This is not spiral bound. So this is kind of, um, it's kind of like formation, but for non-seculars necessarily. Like seculars can absolutely use it, but it, you don't have to be secular. I don't think it even mentions, I don't even know if it, it mentions secular Franciscans. So it's just general seeking a gospel life. So this could be used for anyone. Um, and he really looks at it 
starts out a little bit about Trinitarian spirituality. Okay, this was copyrighted by the National Executive Order, or the Secular Franciscan Order. Um, I mean, looking around, checking the gospel, what does Jesus expect? A look at prayer, dealing with everyday life. What about joy? What if the Messiah came and no one changed? The faces of fear? I'll fight them. I'll hug them. I'll think it over. <laughs> a little hope. Prophets and wonder. An ending can become a beginning? Uh, sorry. And that's that's it. So seeking a gospel life, it ref here's what it says. Seeking a gospel life reflects the gospel vision from a Franciscan viewpoint. There are many ways to write about scripture and many texts of scripture to write about. The spirit of St. Francis of Assisi is mentor and model for me. While this book is filled with quotations from scripture, I try to avoid using them as proof text. The biblical words simply relate to the topic being discussed. To be faithful to these words is a lifelong task. Franciscans profess to commit to this task, and hopefully all Christians choose to do the same because of their baptism. Beautiful. So this gives you a little bit of insight, and if you decide to join an, join an order, um, whether it's secular, you're looking at friars, you're looking at poor Claire's, Sisters of St. Francis, I don't know of anybody that's using this as, as their sole formation book, so you can't go wrong using these. They're not going to be duplicated. They're just going to help you go more deeply like we've been talking about right going deeper and deeper in the level and that's why i have all these these aren't even my formation manual so i'm i go back every now and then and do that journal right and i'm doing kind of doing these and studying this and this is studied in depth um one chapter one little paragraph from here is like every chapter in my formation book right now and so i'm doing all of these kind of at the same time plus all the regular the fun religious books I'm reading and making these all the ones I'm reading for you guys um that's that's just my method at this point in my, <laughs> my life um so you can pick one do whatever uh I need to get in that house and make these cookies before before the day burns up it's going to be super hot so I'm just going to offer up a quick super quick prayer for you guys and hope I don't run out of time father son spirit amen heavenly father our friends out there are trying to discern how to best serve you and live the gospel life. Please, Father, guide them, open their hearts so that they may hear your voice as to what exactly you are calling them to. As well, Father, it's going to be exceptionally hot today, um, even though it's October, and so I just pray that you keep everyone safe um, and comfort those. I know a lot of people are going to have migraines and various illnesses that are going to be triggered by this super hot day and then a cool day tomorrow. So, Lord, if you could just be with them. Comfort them, heal them, make everyone around them patient and, and just charitable in their, and compassionate in how they deal with these people. Um, and just prepare our hearts as we celebrate your son, Francis. And as we get ready for his transitus from this life into the next. And as we celebrate him on Friday, Lord, let us see his example um, that it was possible to live the gospel life radically even in his time even in our time that is the example of saint francis we just pray all this in jesus name amen all right friends have a blessed day